مناضل من أجل العدالة هكذا يرى جاري يوروفسكي نفسه ويطالب الشعوب في كل مكان التوقف عن فعل واحد من أكثر الأمور التي يحبونها التوقف عن أكل اللحوم Mr. Yurovsky, first of all, you think that the world should become vegan. Can you explain us why? Well, animals have suffered more than any other creatures on this planet. Every year we murder 60 billion land animals and 90 billion marine animals just for habit, tradition and convenience, not for survival. So all this pain and suffering, all this torture, we rape animals to impregnate them. We steal their babies from them. And then we separate families from each other and we kill them to sell their flesh and skin. This is a mass murder of monumental proportions. And it has to stop because when it comes to pain and suffering, they suffer just like you and me. What about the health issue here? There's a lot of proteins that we need from animals, products from meat, uh, like uh, calcium, like uh, B12 that is very necessary to our body. Actually, all of our main diseases stem from meat, cheese, milk, and eggs. There are a lot of lies out there that meat is necessary for human survival. Mm -hmm. It's what's killing us. If you look around the world, too, at a poor society, I'm talking impoverished poor. They don't die from heart attacks and strokes and cancers. They die from lack of food, malnutrition, and dirty water. If you look mm -hmm. at the wealthier societies, what do they die from? Heart attacks, strokes cancers, diabetes, kidney problems, all stemming from animal protein, from cholesterol, from saturated fat, trans fatty acids, and from casein that's found in dairy products. The best source of calcium comes from the earth, comes from green leafy vegetables, or from nuts like almonds and cashews. And what about the B12? B12 grows all the, in the soil. All the researchers oh, just absolutely. so that we take it from and get it from animals well, much better than we, we get it from soya or hummus. Everybody on this planet needs to be concerned about B12. The only reason some animals have some trace, very trace amounts of B12, because they eat off the ground. So they're eating dirt when they're eating their food. The best source for us is to do the same thing. Take a carrot out of the ground, organic carrot, eat it directly. You're getting your B12. And we have enzymes in our mouth and in our intestines that naturally produce B12. There's a big myth from the meat, dairy, and egg industries. They're always putting out propaganda. What about protein? What about B12? You'll notice that nobody ever asks a question, what about cobalt? What about chromium? What about fluorine? The reason why people don't ask questions like that is because there's not propaganda about where you're going to get your co cobalt from, but there's propaganda about if you go vegan, you'll never get B12. Keep in mind, too, B12 is destroyed by heat. So when you cook meat, which everybody does, you're killing all the B12 that's in there, and it's very trace amounts anyway. It's just that all the health centers and the ministries just recommend to include meat in our meals. Lies live a long time. Doctors used to promote cigarettes as being healthy, too, less than 100 years ago. There is no such thing as healthy meat, cheese, milk, and eggs. Like there's no such thing as a healthy cigarette or a healthy cigar. It does not exist. Again, you look at the China study, the world's largest dietary study ever. Meat-eating societies have heart attacks and strokes 51.5% of the time. In a vegan society, it's less than 5%. That's the human first job. We, we were hunters. Well. If you look back, we were gatherers before we became hunters. If you look at the <laughs> evolutionary theory, hunting didn't come into play until the ice age hit and wiped out vegetation and we turned to eating animals to survive. Now, mm -hmm. I don't approve a survival scenario, but I understand the excuse. It's a pretty good excuse. There's nothing else to eat. But 99% of this planet right now is not doing it for survival. It's habit and tradition, and that's why it's become obscene and gluttonous and torturous. Mm -hmm. اعتقل يوروفسكي 13 مرة ومنع من دخول كندا وبريطانيا إثر اقتحامه مزرعة لحيوانات ذوي الفراء وتحريرهم من قبضانها الأمر الذي أدخله قبضان السجن لنصف عام كل هذا باسم حقوق الحيوان منذ ذلك الحين لم يتوقف يوروفسكي عن التحدث عن النباتية في آلاف المحاضرات واحدة من أشهر محاضراته تم ترجمتها لثلاثين لغة تحت عنوان أفضل محاضرة ستسمعها في حياتك. You have been doing thousands of lectures around the world. Do you really think that 
you are going to, to change something, actually that you are going to change the world. I have a chance wherever I speak for the crowd to understand what I'm saying. So if I get enough lectures down here, I'll come here. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now America uh, embraces me with 225 to 250 lectures a year, but Israel just became the first country on the planet to embrace me too. And I'm going to Italy next month, so maybe people in Italy will understand this too. But you know what, in the Middle East, if we don't have meat on our table for each meal, it's not a meal. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't consider as a meal. Yeah. Most people think that, but it's so <laughs> untrue. When you think about asparagus and broccoli and tofu and tempeh, which is a fermented soy, and all the wonderful dishes and falafel and tabbouleh and hummus but and majedra. instead of meat, it's not a very, you know, it's not attractive uh, option you are giving here. It only seems that way because people are addicts to meat. <laughs> I mean, take away a cigarette from an addict, they're like, oh, this, this, this sucks, right? But once you realize, once you reteach your taste buds to appreciate the wonderful, healthy food that God truly gave us, the fruits and the vegetables, you will become satisfied. It takes a few months. Old habits are hard to break, new habits are hard to form. There's no doubt about that. مع كل متحمس لمحاضرات يوروفسكي ستجدون اثنين ينتقدونها بشده ولكن وككل واعظ اخر حول العالم فان التاريخ سيكون الشاهد الاكبر على مدى قدرته على احداث التغيير. And you are the Nelson Mandela of the animal rights. Jerry's one of my heroes. Dr. King, Malcolm X, this Rosa Parks, fighting yourself? injustice. You know, I don't, I don't see myself as somebody to be worshipped or idolized. I'm just mm -hmm. a very passionate person with a peaceful message, and if I can understand it, everybody should. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Gary Yorofsky, for your time and for your interview.